Okay, so I'm going to do a quick um, a quick vlog about the um, the Ian Brady situation um, with the author uh, Brian Roberts um, announcing about the find um, of Keith Bennett's body on the moors, and he's just recently announced on his. Um, not recently, it might be an old post, but uh, fairly recently announced on his Facebook, oh, I'm so honoured to have found the body of Keith Bennett. Um, no, that's 100% not true. Uh, it's really previous to go ahead and announce something like that and to, you know, to clearly leak it to the media and then stir up um, a lot of fuss. And when it's not going to actually be true, the fact is, um, Ian Brady wrote to a lot of people and talked about Eagle Rock. He mentioned Eagle Rock and the Reservoir and the Greystones to me in a letter um, around 1995. Now, when I first visited him, I visited him three occasions. The first, um, the first time was around the time when he'd been back on the moor. So it was really fresh in his mind and he spoke a lot about topping saying he walked topping over um where he'd buried um a certain body and it gave me the impression certainly as well when i sat with him the impression that he was having a laugh having a laugh in his special way of having a laugh don't forget he um saw this as like a um, soap opera, as like a comedy, had that sick um, serial killer way of kind of, you know, a dark humor, something that the rest of us wouldn't find funny. He found it amusing and I believe deliberately misled Topping, deliberately came out with loads of things, knowing people um leak their letters to journalists knowing journalists um knew who he was writing to they were certainly leaked about my first visit um phil hall was notified of the sunday people i ended up dating him and ended up working as a journalist myself working um for the press for many many years after that and so they knew that and he knew that they knew and so he would put things in letters specifically to give journalists the runaround because he hated them he wasn't ever going to put information out there that was true information so the very fact that he was mentioning these places uh, was to just give people the runaround he didn't have a confidant he didn't like people doesn't matter what that who's that pen pally guy who um stroke fan that oh, i'm gonna tell the real truth now i mean no you're gonna tell what he told you and basically he was someone who was insane he was someone that did a load of things and didn't know basically why just driven driven to act in an appalling and disgusting way and then when he went in prison um after many years in the scrubs when he was ignored when he got all the attention he did in the later years after fred harrison um talked about the two um the the you know the two extra murders um yada yada and he got a lot of attention then and then he would come out with things like, oh i was just acting i was you know doing existential um experiment and all this guff because he wanted attention, because he wanted to appear like he was an intellectual. He was uneducated. He wasn't an intellectual. He lived in a little council house. He did a really basic office job for somebody just one step above doing bricklaying work. He wasn't an intelligent man, not at all. It's just guff. And all this stuff that he came out with, it had no relation to reality. It was a picture painted by his narcissism that he did this and he did that. And what a fascinating person. Basically, he, he was just a dribbling, uh, you know, dribbling maniac, driven, driven to do things. He didn't even know why he was doing them. Um, like I believe um, after visiting um, Kenneth Bianchi, the Hillside Strangler, they're driven by entities. So they basically have a primal wound. Usually it's not been taken care of by the mother 
and uh, that's why they're always adopted these people and what happens with the primal womb the primal wound and the inability to um to heal that in these cases of these men and they get possessed because they're just like a stronghold um for demonic entities and they come in and get them to do those horrific things and they're just used and basically they they have no idea they have no idea why they acted sometimes in the case of bianchi he denies it all you know in the case of jeremy bamba again entities denies it all um brady admitted it uh, but didn't admit he didn't admit that well he did i mean there was only one letter out of all the hundreds of letters i received of him and the three visits that he said um that he really re revealed his true self it went on in a really kind of crazy way and then said now you're seeing the real me at last um the maniac poking out behind the curtain and that's completely true he's just like insane a maniac he doesn't know why he did da, 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 da. who can know but he wanted to lap up these people that wanted to study him so he would put out things like oh it was just i wanted to do the perfect murder what a load of crap he was just driven like a mad rat um that all that crap that 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 guy brian is coming out with um it's not true it's shit that brady put out there all the stuff about you know getting the information off someone that wrote to him many people wrote to him and got all this guff it's guff it's not important it's what he put out and he's a liar he's evil he never stopped being evil and people that are evil they like to lie they like to lie at other people they hate other people they don't want to enlighten other people they don't like them and he was sitting in a place of, of having a really failed life he's not going to give absolutely not anything to um to anybody so it's just kind of madness for this guy to come along and say all this stuff as if it's new and enlightening oh, he acted like the book compulsion and and he read that when he was in prison long after he'd been uh, put away and um all this stuff about you know he concentrated on the area because brady mentioned of course he mentioned it um of course he mentioned it to give people the run around to make oh i've got a clue now duh, 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 duh. oh i'm getting closer oh i'm being a great detective he knew people were like that do you really think he wanted to enlighten these people and help them and make them famous and give them books he didn't want that he didn't want that for anybody um so it's just ridiculous and i, I mean this guy's come out and said this and i suppose he'll get a big book out of it anyway because people oh that's so fascinating and did the police get it wrong again and was it really keith bennett and maybe it was wrong so he'll get this big bestseller anyway um but it, that there's no way that that will be related to to keith bennett absolutely no way it's just walking up the garden path and um you know it's not fair on um his family because it's just well i think they know um that is horseshit because they um can see the reality of it because serial killing you can't really see the reality of it unless you've gone and sniffed um sniffed it close up for being either the victim or met these individuals and when you meet these individuals you see how tiny they are you know how how, how tiny they are how normal they are and you wonder about all the actions that are so big because they are big that's the entity that's why it's interesting to humans because like oh how do they act like that but they get it totally wrong it's not it's not the individuals it's it's an entity that comes through them and feeds off pain of humanity that's the interesting thing um somebody doing a um nasty little review of one of my books um that are out of print now totally i haven't received any money um from them in years and uh, didn't even make any money on um in for the kill at all not even one penny never mind i don't really like making money connected to that um and said oh you were obsessed with brady no 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 i wasn't i wanted to know what was doing it 
uh, because I had been a child sex abuse victim, my adoptive father, and I knew it wasn't him. And I thought, what is going on? So I had to investigate it. I later became a private investigator. I later became an investigative journalist, um, a successful one. Not anymore, but for a time um, in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, And I always used my intuition. Um, I've always been um, mediumistic. And I knew, looking at a photograph of Brady, there wasn't him. There was something that he was just kind of a... You can tell these people because they don't inhabit their bodies. They're like out of their bodies. So when you look at them, they look like people that have had a drug and have spaced out. People in mental hospitals, you look at pictures of Mara Hinley, she's not actually present in her body, she's spaced out. So they space out and the entity comes in. That's why they look spaced out. And there's no point in asking them, oh, why did you, etc.? Because they, they don't know. Usually they deny it. In the case of Jeremy Bamber, in the case of Kenneth Bianchi, they, they deny it. They say, oh, I didn't do that. Um, they know full well that they were there at the time, but in a way, it's true. They didn't actually do it, but usually these people, they want to get out. But in the case of Bianchi, he's still hosting something. It's highly dangerous, and if he did get out, he would kill probably straight away. Um, and so with Brady, he had this entity, and he admitted it as well. He admitted um, that there was something he spoke to. He called it a green face of death. Um, that was actually a demonic entity. And he admitted that he had something he took orders from. And that's just the bottom line. So there's no need to go into all this stuff about, oh, compulsion, he wanted the perfect murder. No, he didn't. He was just a mad and dra- driven. And they went through his sexuality, his perverse sexuality and they used that and they drove him oh that would be a good you should do that that would you know so that's all he had just like a madden rat there's no oh he wanted to you know he was just like compulsion what a fascinating man he, he wasn't a fascinating man he was just somebody like the local greengrocer this is what these people are they're less interesting than the most boring individual you're ever likely to meet imagine the most boring person you're at you've met in your life and i take that down a good few notches and you've got ian brady and you've got kenneth bianchi little less with bianchi still possessed so of course it's interesting so these people don't have anything going on with them so of course they have to try and make out their oh so interesting Um, and that's you know these people fall for it and it's just mad and they hate as well because they know they're so boring and they want to be big and famous and Brady really lapped up that fame and the reason why he kind of played that role of saying this that and the other was because to get fame he wanted people to talk about him he wanted people to trace traips around those moors and make out they were finding bodies and that kind of stuff because he wanted to hurt people he wanted to make fools of people he found it funny because that is the type of person he was just resentful just a ball of resentfulness and balls of resentfulness they can get used by entities and he was used by an entity but didn't want to come out when they get caught they don't want to admit it why would they admit it oh i'm just a dumb dumb i'm just boring it was an entity that came through me that's the interesting thing go and study that no 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 they want all the attention oh let me study you you're so fascinating i really want to focus on you and study you he didn't deserve the focus and studying there's nothing there to study but these people they don't understand that they don't have a sixth sense they can't see him clearly I actually went and sat with him for hours upon hours and soaked him up and there was nothing there. There's nothing there. There was a thin piece of paper, nothing there. But what was there was entities. They they had since left him, long left him. Um with the second serial killer I met, Bianchi, that they was they were still in him. And actually it's horrifying. You have to think about what the victims went through because they know they're in the presence of something that's non-human and that non-human thing comes forward and rips them into pieces and that is um still present in bianchi um which i suppose makes him fairly interesting but you've got to realize it's not him it's what's behind so if you want a so fascinated by serial killers and that kind of thing start looking into the occult start looking into entity start looking into the gin there's plenty out there um 
the the Muslims know all about the jinn. Um, there's a YouTube Merciful Servant which talks about the jinn and how they come into bodies and what they do. But we English, um, we don't know about that. So we end up, you know, we make gods of those goddamn um, serial killers. It is disgusting absolutely disgusting all that crime con shit people go along and oh let me meet chris berry d once spent five minutes of a serial killer i mean let me just touch the hem of his garment it's absolutely disgusting i often think humanity deserves what it gets and there's a really bad time coming it's end times for sure and there's a really bad time coming uh, and you know they don't look at the spiritual side of things at all and you know they they do make gods out of evil they do because it's all they've got of the supernatural and they sense it's supernatural and that's all they've got you know that's why on netflix they have um evan peters who's absolutely beautiful he's got so much depth and charisma that guy you just have to look at his photograph they got him playing a serial killer and i'm sure they'll do the same with brady but these people when you meet them they're not like that dharma you can tell looking at him he's flat he's dead and that's why these entities find it easy to ride them when they ride them they give these dull empty people something they give them a bit extra so they're excited excited by it so they let it in because it's something more than what they've got they're very one dimensional so what offends me greatly is um this you know this bumming up of serial killers that people do that's going on really hard now because it's end times because evil is doing its li like little victory dance and these things like this um the, the netflix uh dharma thing um I watched five minutes, but I couldn't watch it. You know, the rinsing the blood off the knives. And there's people that have watched it that have been depressed for weeks afterwards. Well, they would be. It draws you in. It draws you in by using somebody highly charismatic. Um, Evan Peters is, there's lots of humans that walk around us now that are hybrids um, from different types of different types of higher beings and they have more than some of us have evan peters is one of those a lot of uh, lady gaga for instance is one of those so when they're on our tv sets we watch them in a hypnotic way because they hypnotize with them and if they start showing us um which you know because they're a different type of person um they start they want transhumanism they don't like the human body they start slashing and like in american horror and there's loads of blood and we get more drawn into it and it's really quite darkly negative and that negativity seeps into us and it's a hook and then we can get entities in us you know they come inside our dreams there's all sorts of stuff when you watch programs these days that they have little programs attached to them that the program carries on in your mind literally programs you carries on in your mind and in your sleep life in the astral it it's continues on that's what they're doing these days it's so strong and all these um the serial killer bullshit bumming up these serial killers like that oh he was trying to do the perfect murder oh he was acting like leopold and leb out of compulsion no 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 he was a little scumbag in a council house didn't know what was going on okay did not know what was going on he was perverse sexuality the entity came through that to lure him to go and pick up young boys and young girls a maddened rat driven to do those things driven just nothing but an empty shell and when i sat with him i know more than most people i knew him for over two decades when i sat with him this is what i found this is what i found an empty shell an empty shell but that's his personality this you know people um interacted with him and his girlfriend and they found them silly and crass and ridiculous and when they met each other around the office they have little sayings that they said to each other and his brady's letters are incredibly boring they were full of hot air they were full of um him 
bumming himself up that oh he's this he's that he actually thought that he was Urquhart of House of Cards and he would play up to that character and say oh I think that's based on me oh and I think Silence of the Lambs is based on me I never have I come across such a person that had nothing going for them absolutely zero going for them and yet grabbed lots of things and pretended that 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 was him it's disgusting it's very very evil and i know personally because i knew brady touched brady interacted with him for a long long time i know him very well and i didn't want to do that just to get that out there I had um, had an interest because my father sexually abused me, wrote a few letters, got invited to see Brady. Why? Because I looked at a really childish look about me. That's why I was blonde. That's why I was invited up there when I was 23. Uh, went to see it and then just met this one dimensional character and thought, oh, beyond belief. No, 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 not true. You know, it's just authors, journalists do this. Um, and so I thought, oh, knock that on the head. But then Phil Hall came along and totally ruined my life, totally destroyed my life. And then after we became lovers, he went, you got to carry on writing to Brady. And I'm like, but why? I don't want to. He's boring. And um, he said, no, that'll make you a real journalist. Of course, I was a working class girl. I'd been in a care system. I didn't have a chance at a career. Of course, I wanted to be a journalist. So I carried on writing to this individual the Phil Hall couldn't get um, a letter back off and it really affected my life it dirtied my life and um, there's a lot of chickens coming home to roost at the moment there's a lot of things uh, BBC are doing something about private investigators working for the press I've been interviewed for that um, I've also been interviewed by um, the American company I won't see who it is but they've been doing something that's out in the spring and that's about the fake shake and there's going to be a sky um thing about the fake shake so this is all coming out there now what they tend to do is they kind of tend to uh put forward four guys like masses an asian so that oh there is evil evil person shake the doll at the camera um oh evil private eye shake the doll at the camera what they never do is expose the middle class powerful people behind that but i think it's a new world right now so when they've they used to do that and get away with it but now the young people are far more intelligent than we used to be generation x they're a new generation they can see right through it if they're holding up a working class person of it or an asian person person i can't speak properly there's someone behind that and actually that's a true seeping evil and um, so I think chickens are going to come home to roost that people that have um, forced people to write to serial killers when they were young girls um, and get them into that. So people say, oh, you must have been obsessed with him. Well, <laughs> no, sorry, I wasn't interested for a period of time. And then in came Phil Hall, my lover, and um, pushed me right into it. And then when I climbed up to work for the News of the World and... Um, Brought in John Boyle, another middle class man, very powerful, lives in a 10 million pound mansion out there in Sussex, never mentioned. He brought in phone hacking to the news of the world. No one mentions him. They mention Glyn Mulcair, a little working class guy. He's shuck at, um, shaken at the camera. Um, it was Phil Hall that said yes to John Boyle, that said yes to phone hacking. Who got sent to prison? The working class guy, Andy Coulson. Now, Phil Hall, and I'm not scared of you, Phil. Phil Hall uh, found out that there was all these American companies doing um, stuff now about um, the fake shake. And he, he came forward to meet them. And I thought, how, how come he's meeting them when he was evil behind Massa? Telling him, this is how you be white, Mazza. This is how you do this. This is how you do that. Yeah, I like it when you hurt women. I like it when you destroy the lives of women. And um, I thought, how is he going to take part in them? He can't admit evil. He's not going to do that. That's what I do. That's what people who have become losers, they, they, they're allowed to. They've got nothing to lose. So they can say, all they've got is what they can give to younger people. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. Phil's not one of those people. He's like lording it up. So he met with these film companies, 
just to see what they were doing, just so they would be able to write in their little books, oh, I came forward, you fucking liar. No, you didn't come forward. You will never come forward. But you know what? I don't think people are going to, I don't think the young generation are going to fall for this evil Asian, this evil working class Asian, because he absolutely wasn't, okay? He wasn't. And as when he took me out on a job and that bodyguard stood in front of me and said, you get through me first, you get through me first before you attack Mazza. I'm not putting up with it. I am not putting up with the public hating on him. I will stand in front of him and fight them off. And I will point them in the direction of the real evil you, you, Phil, you. Sorry, I've got carried away. We're talking about Ian Brady, but this piece of shit actually um, pushed me in the direction of Brady. And I ended up knowing Brady well. Um, did I want to know him for decades? No, I didn't. I thought I was being a journalist, but really I was just going deep with somebody who had an entity. What happens? The, the entity start haunting you. Um, I had a really bad time uh, when I went to see him. Um, he didn't know why I was there. I didn't really even know why I was there. And he lunged on me. And um, I got very, very close to him and it was really, really affected me. Why? Because he's been a container for demonic entities is why. Nothing to do with Brady himself. Um, a very, very unremarkable individual. Um, it made me want to know more about it, these entities. Um, so I went to see another serial killer. Again, unlike Chris Berry D who had five minutes with him, I had um, four hours one day, four hours the next day and sat and touched him and got close to him and s inhaled him. Again, entities, entities, entities. Um, and I wrote about it in a book. The book, I, I, I swear, did anybody even buy one copy of it? Why? Because they don't want this. The public wants um, their serial killers with Evan Peters playing them. Um, you know, sexy, kind of really evil. You know, they want that. They want to think, you know, humans are in charge of their own destiny, even if in a dark way. Humans act, you know, how they want. They act like gods. They take life. Well, well no, they don't. It's not normal for humans to do that. Yes, they do destroy one another in acts of passion. But this random killing thing, like cattle mutilation, no, it's the sad, sorry, one-dimensional um, men being ridden, they're ridden, and they allow themselves to be risen because, be ridden because they know they're one dimensional. So, to get these uh, multi dimensional individuals like Lady Gaga and drop dead gorgeous Evan Peters to play them, do you see how it's wrong? It's totally wrong, it's totally misleading totally misleading because they're not like that they're not multi-dimensional and i don't care how much evan peters dumps himself down he is still going to be a very exciting man he is still going to be charismatic um the same with that zach efron uh, oh god anyway um i've said all i had to say and i just feel bad that you know uh, this individual is doing that i you know i watched him on a little youtube and i don't think he knows any better I really don't think he knows any better, um, but I think he's, I think he should look at the sin of ambition. You know, it is, an, uh, it is a sin to be really ambitious, to say, I want to be someone, I want to be someone, I want to be the, the detective that found out this, I found out Jack the Ripper, I want to be a someone. Well, there's, you know, Keith Bennett has a brother out there. He's got other family. I don't know if it's just his brother. You know, you're really hurting him. And it's not fair, is it? Um, you know, so it's his expense. You're going out there and trying to grab it, grab at fame, grab at ambition. You've got your fame now. And I'm no doubt there'll be a book about it. But own, own it. Own your darkness. You know, these people are interested in serial killers that they write books about. It. Why don't they ever write about why? why they do it why you know what drives them you know chris berry d is very interesting he will admit i'm dark i might have been a serial killer i'm really dark i sit in my basement i ignore my wife and i just focus on what they've done you know it's just darkness he's probably got an entity um and, and this guy brian should look at look at what's driving him look at you know why is he focusing you know jack the ripper is long gone 
there's a new world now out there. Why don't you try and do something for the young people, not just focus on cereal? Why are we feeding our young people serial killer fare? It's disgusting. It's wrong. It's not right. Why are we doing that to them? Uh, that's what you're doing, Brian. Um, that, you know, why do you want to feed the youngsters like serial killer stuff, especially if you're not teaching them anything about it and you're not you don't know about it all the guff you've come out with what are you getting letters from from that gene um i can't remember a second name i had loads of letters like that so did other people it's, it's not exciting or new or or anything there there's nothing there hot air hot air and lies he's a liar a liar trying to make himself out to be interesting when he's not not interesting, not at all, very, very boring, very boring. If he was more individual, he'd have more friends. He wouldn't have some skanky 18-year-old. Again, these people were really basic. You know, he would have done something more with his life if he was so interesting. So these people, these people aren't worth looking at. And to look at it over and over, it's darkness, you know, it's darkness. In I was looking um, at Syria, because why was I? Because the darkness of my father's rape, it never really left me. He took a part of me, my sexuality, my womanhood, my femininity. I wanted it back, I was angry. So it's like, and I want to tell the world, oh, I've been hurt, I've been hurt, I've been hurt. So of course I wanted to, but oh, I'm meeting a serial killer over here, everybody, I've been abused. And it's anger. It's, it, you know, I should have found a way to diffuse the anger. And then I wouldn't have had to get people looking at me knowing I was angry and wanting to tell the world I'm angry here uh, and just shout it at them rather than get cured of that and go on and have a nice life and do something wholesome and try and do something good and try and put good things out there, not books where there's serial killers on the front. I'm glad that I didn't make any money out of that. I didn't deserve to. I spent five years writing it. But you know what? Why was I sitting at a laptop thinking about Kenneth Bianchi? He didn't deserve me to be thinking about him. He just oh, so didn't deserve me. He's just a man that pushes a cart round round a prison who, who has to scrub his underarms because they stink so much i mean come on did he deserve me you sit mm, i wonder why now what was he actually thinking when he um when he took that bottle on on lisa caston i've got to think about it i've got to work out and what it is it's ambition because you think oh if i can find out what he was thinking and put it on a page in a book people are gonna think oh my god that christine hart she's amazing look she's got a real insight into a serial killer and it's just ambition really and so god punished me i wasted that five years and god punished me with homelessness until i came awake and realized that it's a wrong 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 thing to do there's so much more to be focused on focus on god think about god and if you want to write about these people that do these bad things portray them honestly portray them um in in a in a decent way i tried to do that but the publishers i was writing were like mm, hang on you were sitting with brady you must have been scared you must have felt thrilled mm, say that write that it's like no i wasn't i was bored i was bored and i was scared not scared of him or either of them scared that i suddenly was in a situation where i had to think of something to say for a period of hours to somebody that if i was standing next to them at a bus stop i wouldn't have anything to say you just, uh, that's how I felt. I don't have anything to say to this very boring one-dimensional person. I am not interested in this one-dimensional person I'm sitting opposite that looks like a patient in a nut house. Why? Because they are a patient in a nut house, a mental patient nothing oh i read compulsion and went to do the perfect murder no 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 a mental patient in a mental hospital that people roll their eyes at and don't really listen to what they say because it's guff um same in here so he might be famous but it's still guff and it's lies as well it's inventing we've all spoken to people like that who who make out that oh yeah i'm jesus christ a superstar brady was the same that same bullshitting and it just makes me laugh that people that people suck it up anyway i hope this guy um 
comes to his senses and realizes what he's got is an ungodly ambition and we all have it I had it too you know sitting there trying to work out about Bianchi and um you know thinking that I would unlock the key to why Bianchi murdered those 13 girls and um well I did eventually actually it was it was an entity um you know it's entity entity involvement I think in my case I did it for I did it because I wanted to know about my father, but I certainly, I certainly had that ambition that I would be the big I am that would write about it. But they don't want to, they don't want to hear that public really doesn't want to hear that it's entities. They're not, it's like taking something from them. So um, I've had to draw a line under that and realize I've written, 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 but, but, you know, it's wrong to, it's wrong to write about stuff like that. You know, it's wrong to, um, it's wrong to have that certain ambition to want to be the big detective. Um, we all grew up with Columbo and, you know, this kind of thing. And we all, Charlie's Angels, and we all kind of want, you know, we all kind of want to do that. And it's just ambition. And it was weird being interviewed um, two weeks ago by um, one of the big um, channels. It'll be out next year. Uh, I'm not going to watch it. I'm sure I'll look awful on it. Um, but you know, they were going on about work I did for the press and investigations and I was talking about a different investigation. The girl, they were, they were saying, oh, that's brilliant. That's amazing you did that. And it was like, hang on, what about the big investigation, which was into serial killers that lasted all my life and took all my energy, but they weren't interested in that. And it was kind of weird um, to suddenly find myself filmed over that when it was always my ambition was to be the big person that found out like this brian guy that found out about serial killers that uh, i've had fantasies about um finding keith bennett on the moor about going there and channeling brady and getting him to come through and finding out where the body is and been held as well done what hero of course um uh, this guy's just gone that bit further and he's acting it out and getting the press involved the same kind of thing um so we we all we all have that we all should grow up a little bit and let go of ambition because it's wrong it's totally wrong and just look at these serial killers that everybody's so fascinated by and they're all crime con where people pay a hundred pound a ticket just to meet chris berry d because he met bianchi for five minutes it's like what the fuck it's really 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 wrong and just look at the world and look at what's going on behind it there are gods there are angels there's demons and there's jinn and just look at that world look at what's going on look at the occult look at um go to church you know and pray and open up your mind in that way don't focus on people that have been ridden by demons because i tell you you focus on people that have been ridden by demons and you end up getting possessed by those very demons and um, they just lead your life astray make you waste your years you end up suffering um you know it's strange actually sometimes that happens other times looking at people like phil and seeing them thrive and you know have big companies and wives that they love who support them and go back and tell documentaries and no it's not really good for us you know, no it's oh it certainly isn't good for you no um that's it just let the working class asian take the full blame um and but nobody gets away with it nobody gets away with um uh, with evil i mean it could be after death and you go and get you try and rise higher and you can't you get reincarnated again have a harder life it's gonna come back at you at some point anyway i've rambled on um but i just want to say my piece about that man and i'm sorry that he's doing this and he should catch himself on because in a couple of weeks when that dna test is done you will find that it most certainly has no relation whatsoever to keith bennett um and don't do a book Please, mate, don't do not do a book. Just let it go now, yeah? Just let, let it go. Move on to something else. Write about God. Write about the angels. Study the, study the Sepharazam. Something like that, you know? Don't, don't just let go of your ambition there to be Columbo. Uh, uh, it's ungodly. Uh, it's not right. I've been there, mate, and I tell you, it doesn't lead anywhere, anywhere good. Thanks for listening.